good morning to all i am dr j bhuvana assistant professor of chemistry adm college for women nagapatnam today we are going to discuss about chromatography this is for third bsc chemistry in analytical chemistry paper so first what do you mean by chromatography the term chromatography is derived from greek word that means chromo means color and graphing means to write so chromatography means color to write so what is the definition of chromatography chromatography is an analytical technique for separating compounds on the basis of the differences in their affinity for a stationary phase and a mobile phase so chromatography is a analytical technique which means it mainly depends on color that write in the compound that means in the stationary phase or a mobile phase what is the principle behind this chromatography chromatography is a separation method where the analyte is combined within a liquid or gaseous mobile phase which is pumped through a stationary phase usually one phase is hydrophilic in nature and the other one is lithophilic in nature the components of the analyte interact differently with these two phases that means hydrophilic and lithophilic depending upon their polarity the substance spend more or less time interacting with the stationary phase and are thus retarded to a greater or lesser extent so this leads to the separation of the different components present in the sample the chromatograph leads to the separation of the component each sample component eludes from the stationary phase at a specific time called retention time as the components pass through the detector the signal is recorded and plotted in the form of a chromatogram so when we send the sample to the chromatogram chromatography we get the retention time as the component pass through the detector some of the detectors we can see later their signal is recorded and plotted as chromatogram next what are the types of chromatography there are three and are four main types of chromatography they are adsorption thin layer column and partition chromatography so the chromatography is mainly based on the four types so that is adsorption thin layer column and partition chromatography so first one is adsorption chromatography in this process the different components that means the, you have to separate the component that components are adsorbed on the adsorbent to different edges on the absorbity of the component a mobile phase is made over a stationary phase the scattering the components with the higher absorbity to a lower distance than that with lower absorbity next one column chromatography this is the technique used to separate the component of a mixture using a column of suitable adsorbent packed in a glass tube so column chromatography is takes place in the glass tube here we fix the suitable adsorbent the mixture is placed on the top of the column and an appropriate eluent is made to flow down the column slowly so we have to place the mixture in the top of the glass tube okay so and the appropriate eluent is made to flow down the column slowly we have to pass the eluent from the top of the column then it is flows down to the column slowly depending upon the degree of the absorption of the component on the wall adsorbent column the separation of the component takes place so the separation is carried out 
by the means of degree of absorption of the component. So, based on the degree of absorption, the separation of the components takes place in the column chromatography. The component with the highest absorbity is retained at the top, ok. So, the compound which have highest absorption power it retained at the top while the other flow down to the different heights accordingly. The compounds with the lowest absor absorbance will low down the tube. Next one, partition chromatography. In this process, a continuous differential partitioning of components of a mixture into a stationary phase and a mobile phase takes place. Here, the partition is takes place by continuous differential stationary phase and a mobile phase. The example of partition chromatograph is paper chromatography. The principle behind the paper chromatograph is partition chromatography. In this paper, paper is used as a stationary phase. That why it is called as paper chromatography, which is suspended in a mixture of solvent that act as mobile phase. So, the solvent act as mobile phase in paper chromatography and the paper is act as stationary phase. Here, we put a spot at the base of the chromatographic paper. That is a chromatographic paper. In that paper, we have to put a spot at the base of the paper by using the mixture to be separated. And as the solvent rises of the paper, the components are carried out to different degrees depending upon their retention on the paper. Here in the paper chromatography, the mixtures are going up in the going to the towards the paper based on the degree of retention. The components are thus separated at different heights. Next one, we are going to detail discuss about thin layer chromatography. This is an example for adsorption chromatographic technique, ok. So, there is a partition chromatography, adsorption chromatography. Here, thin layer chromatography is an example for adsorption chromatographic techniques. That means, the separation of mixture of components and identification of the constituent takes place through thin layer chromatography. So, this is the chromatographic technique based on the principle of adsorption technique. Here we can separate the mixtures of the component and also identify the constituent. So, what is the principle behind this thin layer chromatography? Some adsorbents like silica gel, alumina are supported as thin layers on glass plates. So, the silica gel and alumina, they are the adsorbents. They are Post, post pasted as a thin layer on the glass plates. The moving substances are attracted by the polar sites on the surface on the adsorbent by electrostatic forces. There is a threefold interaction between the solvent and the absorbent, the solvent and the compound, the compound and the absorbent. The principle of the thin layer chromatography is mainly based on the threefold interaction. What are the threefold interactions? They are the solvent and the absorbent, the solvent and the compound, and the next one is the compound and the absorbent. Based on the three principles, the thin layer chromatography works out. What are the techniques behind this thin layer chromatography? There are six type of techniques you have to carry out to takes place the thin layer chromatography. So, what are they? They are choice of adsorbent, choice of solvent, preparation of chromatogram, sample application, development of the chromatogram, location of compound on the chromatogram. So, we have to carry out these the techniques and we have to analyze the samples present. So, first one is choice of adsorbent. The choice of adsorbent are very important in thin layer chromatography. There are number of materials which are used as absorbent. So, already we see silica gel and alumina. They are the best example for absorbent 
and also we can use cellulose, polyamide powder, calcium sulphate, magnesium sulphate etc. So the silica gel is the most widely used absorbent in thin layer chromatography. This is used along with the binding agent like plaster of Paris. So next one is alumina. This is basic in nature. Alumina is very basic. It may be applied with or without plaster of Paris. It can be easily applied in the glass plates. Next one is cellulose. Several cellulose powders with a variety of ion exchange properties are available. They can be used as an adsorbent in thin layer chromatography. Some of the commercial adsorbents like polyamide powder, calcium sulphate, magnesium sulphate and the powdered glass can be act as adsorbent. Next one, choice of solvent. In the techniques there is a second one is choice of solvent. The choice of solvent depends on the nature of the substances to be separated and then on the adsorbent used. Generally, the polarity of the solvent and the substance is matched and then this choice of solvent is made. More porous solvents produce greater migration and thus give better separation. This is a very important point in the choice of solvent because the polar solvents produce greater migration in thin layer chromatography and gives better separation. The choice of solvents should be such that the position of the compound must be halfway between its point of application and the solvent friend. Combination of two solvents also gives good separation than single solvent. So we can choose two solvents rather than the single solvent. It can give the better result that means the good separation can be takes place. The choices of solvents are petroleum ether, carbon tetrachloride, benzene, pyridine, acetone, water etc. We can use either one solvent or the combination of any two can give the better result. Next third technique preparation of chromatogram. How do you prepare the chromatogram? Here we select the absorbent next to the solvent is ready. Third one is preparation of chromatogram. How do you prepare the chromatogram? We have to take a square or rectangular glass plate okay. We have to take the glass plate with the square shape or rectangular shape with the sizes ranging from 2.5 centimeter to 20 centimeter or from 2 to sorry 20 to 20 centimeter okay. We can select the glass plate from 2.5 to 20 and the breadth is 20 centimeter used as absorbent supports in TLC. So this is very important point. So we have to select the glass plate ranging from 2.5 to 20 centimeter. Plastics and the metal foils can also be used instead of glass plates. So we can use rather the plastic or metal foils instead of glass plates we can select these two. The most widely used absorbent is silica gel. Okay. A weighed amount of the absorbent is taken in the bottle. The silica gel, the, its weight is measured, then it is taken in the bottle. Water is added to it. Okay, we have to next we have to add the water. The bottle is stirred and is shaken vigorously until we get a homogeneous thick mobile slurry. The uh, silica gel and the water are mixed well and we can be stirred using a mechanical stirrer and we get a homogeneous thick and mobile slurry. The two plates are put together, they are held by the thumb and forefinger at one end. Now they are dipped in the slurry, taken out and are held vertically. The solvent dries up, the dry plates are separated. Now we get two chromo plates. This is the third uh, techniques for uh, chromatography. Next fourth one is sample application. Now we have to apply the sample that is which you have to separate it and analyze that is taken out. A small amount of the sample is dissolved in a small volume of a volatile solvent such as benzene, 
ether or ethanol. We have to take the sample and dissolve in the small amount of volatile solvent that means easily evaporatable solvent such as benzene, ether, ethanol. The choice of the solvents depends on the nature of the substance to be separated and the nature of the adsorbent. So we have to very careful about the choice of the solvent. It must depends on the nature of the substance to be separated and the nature of the adsorbent. For example, when we use the polar substances for analysis, we have to use polar solvents only. Less polar substances should be dissolved in a suitable non-aqueous solvent. So when we use the non-polar, less polar substances, we can dissolve it in the non-aqueous solvent. Okay. So activated silicon gel or alumina should be used as adsorbent. A base line is drawn above 2.5 cm from one edge of the plate. In the plate, we have to draw a base line at about 2.5 cm from any one edge of the plate. The samples are applied in small spots. In the base line, we have to apply the sample as a small spot from 1 cm apart on the base line. Thus, the solvent is evaporated. Solutions of standard substances are also applied by the side of the test samples. This is the fourth part, sample application. Next one, development of the chromatogram. Next we have to see how the chromatogram is developed in the glass plates. The chromatogram is usually developed by ascending method in a developing chamber called the tank. So the chromatogram is usually developed as ascending method. The atmosphere in the tank is saturated with the solvent vapor by placing impregnated with the solvent around the side of the tank. The chromo plate is placed between the glass plate and filled with the solvent. So the readied chromo plate is placed between the glass plates and the fill, filled with the solvent. The tank is closed firmly with a lid. You have to close the tank with a lid. After a certain time, when the solvent has moved to about 10 to 20 centimeter, at as time goes on, the solvent has moved to 10 to 20 centimeter above the origin place. From the starting place, the solvent going to move. Uh, from at about 20, 10 to 20 centimeter, the plate is removed from the tank and the solvent front is carefully marked. You have to mark the solvent position in the glass plate. Then the solvent is evaporated. Next the final one is location of the compound on the chromatogram. So the sixth technique, the last one is location of the compound. So Colored compound can be identified by visual inspection. We can clearly see when the colored compound used, the color travel can be easily identified by visual by means of eye. To identify colorless compounds, physical or chemical methods are adapted. So if we take on the colorless compound, then we have to carry out physical or chemical methods. So what are they? they when water is sprayed on the chromatogram, Hydrophobic compounds such that show their presence are optically dense waxy areas. So when we use the colorless compound, we can spray the water on the chromatogram. If we use the hydrophobic compounds, means it shows the presence as optically dense waxy areas. The developed chromo chromatogram is inspected under UV light in a darkened box. We can use a darkened box. There you kept the chromatogram. Here we pass the UV light. It can appear as a dark spots. Many compounds appear as dark spots in a light background. Next, crystals of iodine are placed in a tank during development. We have to uh, know the chromatogram. We can use the crystals of iodine. The crystals of iodine are placed in a tank during development. It imparts a dark brown color to the spot. So we use iodine. It gives a dark brown color to the spot. That means movement of the solvent can be noted. 
the sample is mixed with a very small amount of a radioactive substances and applied on the plate. We can also use a radioactive isotopes mixed with the sample. When it is applied on the plate, the radioactivity is measured by Geiger Muller counter after development. So, Geiger Muller counter is used to measure the radioactivity. So, when we use the radioactivity isotopes, we can use a Geiger Muller counter to measure the radioactivity of the sample. They may be detected by auto radiography also. Next, what are the applications? TLC may be considered basically for qualitative identification, quantitative separation in the separation, the preparation of organic and inorganic materials. Next, we have came to applications. So, what are the uses of TLC? Thin layer chromatography is mainly used for qualitative identification. How the components or compounds are qualitatively in nature? Then it is used for quantitative separation. What are the quantities that present in the sample and how it is separated can be measured using TLC. The technique is extremely suited for analysis of components which are available in traces only. So, this techniques can be used when we get a traces of samples also. A large number of inorganic compounds have been separated, identified and qualitatively analyzed. analyzed. The applications of TLC include the detection of byproduct in synthetic process. When we prepare a product by synthetic, it, the byproducts can be detected by using TLC. Determination of the presence of impurity. When we use any impurities in the solvents, in the components, it can be detected and determined by using TLC. Removal of impurities. The impurities can also be removed by using TLC. And isolation of pure compounds and analysis of inorganic cations and anions can also be detected by using TLC. So, we came to know about what is meant by chromatography. The chromatography means chromo, that means color to write. It is derived from the Greek word. Next, we have to know about the four types of chromatography. That means adsorption, partition, paper and column chromatography. In this class, we briefly explain, discuss about thin layer chromatography. What is meant by thin layer chromatography? What are the principles behind this thin layer chromatography? What are the techniques? There are six main techniques involved in the thin layer chromatography. And lastly, we discuss about the applications of the TLC. Thank you girls.